Good morning. Today is Monday, the 15th day of March in this 20, 21st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading of the 86th Psalm. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you are great. You do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seek my life. They have not yet uh, they have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me <clears throat> and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> A reading from No Wonder They Call Him the Savior. The chapter is entitled, Leave Room for Magic. Thomas. He defies tidy summary. Oh, I know we've labeled him. Somewhere in some sermon, someone called him Doubting Thomas. And the nickname stuck, and it's true. He did doubt. It's just that there was more to it than that. There was more to his questioning than a simple lack of faith. It was more due to a lack of imagination. You see it in more than just the resurrection story. Consider, for instance, the time that Jesus was talking to all, in all eloquence, about the home he was going to prepare. Though the imagery wasn't easy for Thomas to grasp, he was doing his best. You can see his eyes filling his face as he tries to envision a big white house on St. Thomas Avenue. And just then, Thomas is about to, to get the picture. Jesus assumes, you know the way that I am going. And Thomas blinks a time or two, looks around at the other blank faces, and then boasts out, burst out with a candid ablam. Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Thomas didn't mind speaking, didn't mind speaking his mind. If you don't understand something, say so. His imagination would only stretch so far. And then there was the time that Jesus told his disciples that he was going to go to be with Lazarus, even though Lazarus was already dead and buried. Thomas couldn't imagine what Jesus was referring to, but if Jesus was wanting to go back into the arena with those Jews, who had tried once before to stone him, Thomas wasn't going to let him face them alone. So he patted his trusty sidearm and said, 
Let's die with him. Thomas had spent his life waiting on the Messiah. And now that the Messiah was here, Thomas was willing to spend his life for him. Not much imagination, but a lot of loyalty. Perhaps it is this trait of loyalty that explains why Thomas wasn't in the upper room when Jesus appeared to the other apostles. You see, I think Thomas took the death of Jesus pretty hard, even though he couldn't quite comprehend all the metaphors that Jesus at times employed, he was still willing to go to the end with him. But he had never expected that the end would come so abruptly and prematurely. As a result, Thomas was left with a crossword puzzle full of unanswered riddles. On the one hand, the idea of a resurrected Jesus was too far-fetched for dogmatic Thomas. His limited creativity left little room for magic or razzle-dazzle. Besides, he wasn't about to set himself up to be disappointed again. One disappointment was enough, thank you. Yet, on the other hand, his loyalty made him yearn to believe. As long as there was the slimmest thread of hope, he wanted to be counted in. His turmoil, then, came from a fusion between his lack of imagination and his unwavering loyalty. He was too honest with life to be gullible, and yet was too loyal to Jesus to be unfaithful. In the end, it was this realistic devotion that caused him to utter the now famous condition, unless I see the nails marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were, I will not believe it. So, I guess you could say that he did doubt, but it was a different kind of doubting that springs not from timidity or mistrust, but from a reluctance to believe the impossible and the simple fear of being hurt twice. Most of us are the same way, aren't we? In our world of budgets, long-range planning, and computers, don't we find it hard to trust in the unbelievable? Don't most of us tend to scrutinize life behind furrowed brows and walk with cautious steps? It's hard for us to imagine that God can surprise us. To make a little room for miracle today, well, it's not sound thinking. As a result, we, like Thomas, find it hard to believe that God can do the very thing that he is best at, replacing death with life. Out our infertile imaginations bear little hope that the improbable will occur. We then, like Thomas, let our dreams fall victim to doubt. We make the same mistake that Thomas made. We forget that impossible is one of God's favorite words. How about you? How is your imagination these days? When was the last time you let some of your dreams elbow out your logic? When was the last time you imagined the unimaginable? When was the last time you dreamed of an entire world united in peace? Or all believers united in fellowship? When was the last time you dared dream of the day when every mouth will be fed and every nation dwell in peace? When was the last time you dreamed about every creature on earth hearing about the Messiah? Has it been a while since you claimed God's promise to do more than all we ask or imagine? Though it wasn't against every logical bone in his body, Thomas said he would believe if he could have just a little proof. And Jesus, who is ever so patient with our doubting, gave Thomas exactly what he requested, He extended his hands one more time. And was Thomas ever surprised? He did a double take.
fell flat on his face and cried, My Lord and my God. Jesus must have smiled. He knew he had a winner in Thomas. Any time you mix loyalty with a little imagination, you got a man of God on your hands. A man who will die for a truth. Just look at Thomas. Legend has him hopping a freighter to India, where they had to kill him to get him to quit talking about his home prepared in the world to come and his friend who came back from the dead. And let us pray. Holy God, with but a little imagination, the improbable and the impossible that is sometimes you becomes reality. You call us in faith to believe in the improbable, in the impossible, in life that can come forth from death. We pray that we, too, might embrace, as Thomas did, that truth, the reality that you can bring life from that which is death, from that which is lost, you can help it to be found once again. And what I speak of this morning, O oh Lord, is our very lives. For once we were lost, but now we are found. Once we were blind, but now we can see. We see because of what you have done, the impossible. Help us to be a people who embrace that, that truth that is you, that you are indeed quite different than the rest, that the things that we long for, that the world needs, are possible when we place our trust in you and in your reality. Be our hands and our help in that journey of faith to believe and to trust in the things that are improbable and impossible. Help our world to find that center that you've created it to live upon, that fulcrum of balance in this world that weighs the good against the evil, that balances out the injustices and brings forth the reality of hope. Give to our world all that is needful. And help us in our journey this day to do so in faithfulness to your word and to your way. Give us opportunities that we might proclaim the gospel in wherever places we may dwell this day. And that its truth might be borne out in the life that we live. We thank you for the beginning of this new week. We know, O oh Lord, that you abide in all times and in all places. As many still journey toward that day of receiving their vaccines, let that possibility and reality become very real for this world. Touch the hearts of those that are reluctant to embrace what is needful that this pandemic might be brought to an end. Care for those that still suffer from it, from those that still face the reality of death. Give to them and their loved ones the reality of new life that is found in you. And hear now our prayers that we lift up to you in this moment of silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have an overcast, cloudy day with the prospects of some rain, cooler temperatures, but again, a day that we have life and being within. Give you thanks for that blessing. And may your life live as that which is a blessing to others. God be with you. Amen.